Micro interactions can make your website look and feel more professional, but they can also play a critical role in highlighting a specific section, helping you close conversions. In this video, we're going to take a deep dive on this micro interaction, showing you exactly how it's built. And finally, we'll take a look at where you would even use this type of interaction, showing you a real demo. So today we're taking a look at Kevin Haig's interaction. You can find the original clonable of his design in the link in the description. So go ahead and check that out. But today we're going to take a look at this micro interaction. Now it's very, very subtle, but if you focus on the button, you'll see that there is a slight animation, slight interaction that's going on here. As we hover over this button here, this sign up button, we see that there are some objects in the background that are zooming around. So if I just go ahead and increase that size here, we can see that it starts to slightly move around there. So how exactly is this built and how can we replicate this for our own project? Over here on the left side, we have the full breakdown of this button here. So we've got the button itself, which is just a link. Uh, we've got the button inner, which sets all the sizes, all the parameters for the CSS. And then we've got the text itself, the gradient and the gradient glow. So we'll get into all of that in just a second. So the only thing that's really being animated here, the only interaction that's really happening in terms of you animating something is going to be this part here. So the button itself, we've got this interaction that we're going to go into in a little bit, but first let's take a look at the rest of these layers. So the gradient itself is made up of these two divs, which were happened to call gradient ball. The both, both of them are called gradient ball. And then we've got gradient glow as well. So these gradients here, these balls are made up of, linear gradients. So they make up the div block of this linear gradient. So this layer here is made up of this linear gradient. The entirety of the div is just this simple gradient. And what happens when we go ahead and hover above it is that this gradient moves up and down left and right around this div block around this link. And so if we go ahead and take a look at the button itself, we'll see that on hover, we have a few different things that are going on with this class. So we've got hover on button, we have a timed animation. And the only thing that's really happening in terms of us hovering over something. So the gradient layer itself is increasing opacity from 0% or from 10% all the way to 100%. So that allows us to see the entirety of what's inside these these divs here. So the actual gradients are, are being lit up finally. And as we hover out, then that gradient goes back to 10%. So we can slightly still see it, but it isn't the full brightness. And apart from that, we also have this page load, these two animations here, these two interactions. So ball one, what's happening here is the gradient or the div is moving from the left to the right, up, left, and back down. And while it's doing that, it's also scaling to go from small to large, back to small. So we can see that here in slow motion, as I go ahead and click play, we can see that the animation starts to happen here and the div moves to the right, moves up, moves to the left. And as that's happening, it's also scaling up, scaling down. So we can see here on the scale, we've got one, then we've got 1.5, and then it goes back down to one. And after all that transition, the ball moved around clockwise or anti-clockwise a full round. And the same thing happens on page load two, except we get rid of the scaling. So in this scenario, it's only the ball moving up, down, left, right, or up, left, down, then right. And that isn't scaling. It's just simply moving up, left. Well, you might be asking yourself, why does this even matter this part of the animation? Well, if you take a look at how it's actually built, the animation is happening continuously, right? So this movement of the circle, the div, the gradients, those are happening continuously. And the only thing that's essentially being animated or really is being triggered is going to be the opacity of that animation. So the gradients, the balls itself are moving inside of this gradient. And when we hover above the button, this div is highlighted and the opacity is increased to 100%. So that is the only thing that is really happening inside of this animation or interaction that you have to play around with when you go ahead and create this on your own. So we have taken a look at this and if we wanted to, we can go ahead and change how this is looking. We can make this blue if you wanted to, maybe pink, maybe yellow, something like that, just so you guys can see that this changes if we change the properties themselves of the gradient. And now it's looking a little bit more yellow, a little bit greener. 
So that is how that would work if we wanted to go ahead and change that. Now, the gradient glow that we see here under the actual inner is gonna be the glow outside of the button itself. So that acts as a shadow to the entirety of the button. But instead of using a simple shadow, we have the layers themselves that are just on the background. So it's more of the same layer. So it's the same div blocks that are moving up and down, but in this case, they're behind the button. So they're acting as a glow effect or kind of like a blur. Now, where would we actually use this and why does this even matter? So we figured out how we could recreate this, what the inner workings of this interaction are, but how would we actually use this in real life? Well, if we have a section such as a CTA section or a feature section that is super important, this is the section that is gonna drive conversions, gonna close clients, then it might be a good idea to take a good look at it and question yourself. Should I add an extra interaction here to make it seem like it's very important that they sign up, you know, kind of drive those conversions up? Well, if we scroll all the way down here, we'll see that we have this demo section that I created here. So we have join the crew, once in a lifetime opportunity, and we're, we're running our final cohort of the year. It'll sell out in under 24 hours. Just this, this text that make, makes it seem like it's super, super important that you sign up right now. And when you go to sign up, you get this feedback that you know there's this glowing effect. You know This is a super cool possibility, super cool opportunity. And that effect happens when you add this type of interaction. So if you added a simple button, people would still convert, but it wouldn't seem like it was that much more of a great opportunity. Now, just because you're adding this interaction doesn't mean that you're gonna boost sales 100%, that's not the case, but it might make that extra little effect that this is a great idea, it's an important thing to sign up, and this is the golden ticket to this opportunity or to this conversion that you wanna do. Now, if you guys wanna check out the original Clonable to test this out for yourselves, the link is gonna be in the description. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys have any questions about how this is built, how you would incorporate this into your own project, then do let me know down below as well. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.